Good morning, welcome. My name is Dorina Bustamante. I am the president of the board of directors for the Evans Churchill Community Association, the neighborhood that we are in today within the heart of the Roosevelt Row Arts District here in downtown Phoenix. We're super excited that so many of you community members were able to be here today. Thank you for all the business owners for coming out today, for having your awesome businesses in the Arts District. Um, of course, the Roosevelt Row Community uh, Corporation, the Arts District, the Board of Directors, there's some wonderful people here today that have helped make this neighborhood great. Um, also, of course, uh, Mr. Steve Jennings and Alex Juarez, who, champ who are champions for livable communities with AARP. Thank you for all you do. Yay, and of course, um, City of Phoenix Streets and Transportation, without which this gorgeous streetscape improvement would not have occurred and to um, help enhance uh, this amazing neighborhood and connect everyone up here from the Arts District at Hans Park down to the downtown core. So thank you all for being here. This is exciting. We are gonna cut a ribbon and do some fun stuff. Um, but before that, Mr. Uh, Councilman Michael Nowakowski has a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Karina. Wow, this is amazing, isn't it? I remember, I've been on the council for about 11 years now, and when I first came on, people were talking about a project on Roosevelt Road, that we have first Fridays, and that we needed to do something, we needed to better it, so we got a group of people together, and we started talking about a master plan, not just about Roosevelt Road, but what can we do on 2nd Avenue, what can we do on 1st Avenue, what can we do down Roosevelt Road, what can we do down Adams Street? And what, one of the things that somebody came up with about eight years ago is that we should have a pedestrian mall from Margaret Hans Park all the way to the Sun Stadium. So we talked that, we tossed that around, and some people were for it, others were against it. And at that time, the city manager was David Cavazos and goes, you know, Councilman, we really don't have enough funding for uh, a pedestrian mall, but what we could do is we can use paint to make it more walkable and more inviting and exactly what you want it to be more like a pedestrian area. So what we did is if you notice that a couple years ago there was green paint and then instead of having curves at that time we actually used paint and now that paint has been replaced by beautiful curves and trees and one of the things that we heard loud and clear that we needed more parking, more parking in downtown Phoenix. So instead of parking your car sideways we actually went um, in and out so people can park more cars. Then the other thing that we found out was that some of the students were actually using some of the parking spaces and that we needed to control the parking because a lot of the businesses needed more parking. So we actually put some meters in and we have different hours, half hour, hour, and two hour um, times for, for that. So we all learned how to coexist with each other. And then the next thing was this whole walkable community and rideable community. And then all of a sudden people started coming up with all these great ideas. And look at this new place right here that was just opened last night and today's gonna to be their grand opening. It's just amazing how they can reuse cargo um, containers. And if you walk inside, you'll see all kinds of um, pallets being used for tables and chairs. And it's just amazing how people come together, they have a vision and that vision comes to become reality. I'm a product of downtown. I went to St. Mary's High School just down the street um, back in 1982. I graduated. And if you would have told me that downtown would actually have apartments and high rises, that St. Mary's would be replaced by, I mean, the uh, Ramada Inn would be replaced by a law school, and St. Mary's Gym would have the Arizona Center on it, I would have told you all were crazy. But now it is amazing. And it's amazing. I want to thank all the individuals that live in this area that are visionaries, that work together with the city, that works together with all the business people and the community leaders to make this all happen. And I call this the Team Phoenix approach. So thank you all for making this possible. Thank you all for being a part of this team and making Phoenix the best place to live, walk, and ride. With that, I'd like to introduce to you all our Deputy City Manager, Mario Pandiawa. Thank you so much, Councilman. It is so exciting to be here this morning, this beautiful morning. I actually walked over here from City Hall most of the way on First Street, and what a beautiful walk it was. Uh, it's, it's a great time to be here. I want to just uh, thank Councilman Nowakowski. I've had the honor and privilege to work with him uh, since he's been elected to the council, and uh, he's just been a great advocate 
for, for downtown, for, uh, for the city of Phoenix transportation, uh, for multimodal transportation, and putting all these infrastructure improvements in place. So uh, thank you very much, Councilman, for all of your work uh, improving our city. I'd like to take a moment just to acknowledge our, our funding partners with this, which include the Arizona Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration. I also want to acknowledge a lot of team members who uh, put in a lot of work and a lot of time to accomplishing all the changes that you see here on, on First Street. Um, from the Street Transportation Department, Chris Ewell, Anthony Humphrey, Gail Brinkman, Tom Smith, Paul Ennis, and Robert Zeiger were all a huge part of getting the construction done. Uh, we had a great engineering design team from Gavin and Barker Incorporated. Uh, Mark Gavin and John Barker did a wonderful job uh, on their design. And the construction uh, was uh, managed by Blue Cork Contracting Incorporated. Adam Raynor, Dustin Blue, Han Javier Carrion. Our stakeholder communications was done by Inroads. Lori Pierce uh, did a wonderful job with communicating and make sure everybody was up to speed. Can you all walk, uh, join me in giving a round of applause to the, all the great work that the team did? So I'd like to point out just uh, a little bit about the improvements uh, we've made here to enhance the pedestrian experience overall. Um, first of all, First Street along this stretch from McKinley to Moreland, Moreland was narrowed down to, to one lane, uh, one vehicular lane. Uh, that allowed us to expand the sidewalks and the landscaping. More than 125 shade trees have been added. Uh, what a wonderful thing to reduce the, the heat island effect here downtown and to, to make our pedestrian experience so much more enjoyable. Um, the, uh, the curbs were extended at the intersections, which allows for easier crossing for pedestrians. Uh, had much shorter distance to go along the asphalt, so that's a, that's a great thing too. Um, we, uh, we were able to add bike lanes uh, on this stretch. And so we're really talking about pedestrians, bicycles, everybody can have a chance to, to experience this street much in a much more safe way. Um, these improvements will help us uh, economically, environmentally, and uh, socially. So um, I'm proud to say we're also looking at making similar types of changes uh, on other projects in the city. Uh, on Third Street, all the way from Garfield downtown up to uh, Indian School Road. Uh, 3rd and 5th Avenues between McDowell and Washington Street and uh, on Van Buren just outside of downtown between 7th and 24th Streets. Uh, so I encourage everyone to get involved in, in those efforts to help shape our success with those projects and with downtown overall. Um, thank you all for, for coming today and sharing in this, in this great uh, event. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn it over. Please welcome uh, Berman Pierre president of the Roosevelt Row Community Development Corporation. Well, thank you. My name is Ramon Pierre. Uh, as you said, I'm president of the Roosevelt Row CDC, as well as pastor of Roosevelt Community Church. Um, for, a moment, for a moment, let me just take you back to 2005. Uh, I just uh, joined the board of the Roosevelt Row CDC, and a small group of us were in the beginnings of planning to start uh, the church over there at Roosevelt and First Street. And the response that I got uh, when I told people what we were thinking of doing was, was why would you do that? <laughs> There's no reason to, to start uh, a church uh, in downtown Phoenix because nobody lives there. <laughs> There's no reason to do something like this. And, and really, the, the, that response wasn't entirely inaccurate. I mean, in 2005, uh, there's dirt lots, there's empty buildings. Uh, we would joke about downtown Phoenix being a, a ghost town. People would come for events, uh, and then they would leave. Um, so there was some truth to that response, but uh, I, I would suggest that it wasn't entirely true. Uh, it wasn't that there was nobody living downtown. There, there were people, um, a small group of people, and I think a uh, number of you are, were part of that group of people. A lot of those people serve on the Evans Churchill board, serve on the ArtLink board, serve on the Roosevelt Row CDC board, people who started galleries and restaurants and small businesses, uh, people who are living and, and building and had a vision for something bigger than what was currently there. Um, really a vision for a community that I like to say is, is creative, uh, that's inclusive, uh, and that's connected. So they had a vision for that and, and invested in that and were part of that. Uh, and so we flash forward to, to today, to 2018, and what do we see? We see around us a community. We see, obviously, ASU downtown. We see condos and apartments being built. Uh, we see community building 
and forming. That story is, is really being written and told now in, in ways that are exciting, uh, far beyond maybe what many of us thought was possible. Uh, but at its core, I would suggest that those, those values are still really important, um, that this is a community that's creative, uh, that's, that's inclusive, uh, and that's connected. And the development of, of First Street, I would argue, is part of telling that story. And one face you could look at First Street development, and it's, I mean, it's not the sexiest thing, like bigger sidewalks, uh, more parking, uh, more trash cans, uh, bike lanes, right? It was just sort of very practical stuff. Uh, however, I just argue that, that that's essential for, for us to be uh, the kind of community that we want to be, uh, that we shouldn't take for granted the ability to, to walk more easily, to ride more easily to different places uh, is, is key for us to be the community that we want to be. The, the ability just to see one another more easily and, and hang out in these spaces, that's all part of this story that we now get to tell, that, that I would argue gets accelerated now. But still, at its very core, it's those things. It's, it's creative, it's inclusive, it's connected. And, and as a pastor, I would say it's even more than that. You know, the Bible talks about a community of people that loves God and loves their neighbor. Uh, and, and I want to see more of that. Uh, I think we're, we're part of that. I think we're now poised to do that way, way more. We, we don't have to hang out in dirt lots anymore. <laughs> we have sidewalks and benches and other places that we can participate in and, and, and invest in. And I just encourage us to continue to tell that story, to continue to, to build the downtown community that we love so much. We invite uh, Kel Duncan to, uh, to, to speak now. He's uh, one of the owners of uh, the Churchill. Uh, thank you, Ramon. Uh, I guess we're a good example of what he's talking about. We used to be that, that dirt lot here, um, and we chose downtown for all the reasons he mentioned. Uh, it's a creative community, it's inclusive, and it's been awesome to come down here and see the response um, from our neighbors, from the community, and from the neighborhood. So, you know, the streets being improved, sorry. The streets being improved is, is obviously awesome. We got lucky on the timing. Um, we started this project a long time ago. Obviously, you just see the end now, but um, Streets has been really, you know, great about kind of communicating with us. And I've been working with Gail Brinkman here for two years now on this project. So it's, it's nice to finally see it finish and have us open at the same time. So it's really nice. So thank you. Hold on. I guess, we're, I guess we're getting our sign official. All right. Well, well the, Duncan, we'd like to welcome you. you to the neighborhood and give you an official awesome. Evans Churchill signed up. Didn't know I was getting Street that today. Nice. <laughs> Yay. Very cool. And then. You know, before we cut the ribbon, I want to give a special thanks to, um, where's Rick Neymar? Rick? Woo! Rick really worked hard on this project also, and then um, until um, he retired and went to ASU, so he's still part of our community and, and one of those vision visionaries for this area. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Okay, on that note, let's proceed to the corner here where Monica Hernandez is, has everyone situated to do the ribbon cutting. Please join us. Two, three. Woo!